Oh my god, it's a podcaster, but not quite. Well, hey Tony, what you got today? Well guys, it's time to take the Jeff Beck body, the genuine Fender Jeff Beck body, here it is, and the genuine Fender Jeff Beck neck, I'll put them together. Well, let's face it, it's not rocket science and it's not particularly difficult, is it? Well, here we are. I'm going to get the neck fitted, string her up, <laughs> as they say, and uh, really uh, get down to making the Jeff Beck Strat what it should be, not two parts, but a whole. Now, for those of you that don't know about this little uh, exercise I've been doing, I bought uh, the body from a company called the Stratosphere on eBay. I paid about, uh, well, let's say it was six, seven hundred. Yeah, we'll call it six to seven hundred pounds, which is a lot of money. And the neck, if you didn't see the uh, review on both of these, well, the net cost about uh, 500 pounds and we could say 600 pounds so we could say 1300 for the whole deal and these are basically new parts so it's all good and uh, getting a, uh, a Jeff Beck genuine Fender Stratocaster that's basically brand new is the tags uh, yeah for 1300 quid is really an exercise and it's one that well, frankly, it would save me a lot of money if I bought the new one, which is £2,295 in the UK. And I believe as low as £2,100 in the USA. Dollars, that is. But of course, you've got to add the tax, and I've already got my, yes, 20% already added. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's all uh, a lot of money. <laughs> if you're in England. Oh, you're not. Lucky you. Okay, so I'm going to get the camera around uh, so we can uh, sort of fit this neck the easy way. It's four screws on, all said and done. And then we can have a look at how it's set up and all that sort of thing. Now, whether I show you every last thing on camera is another story because that's not really the aim of the, uh, the video. The aim of the video is to show you the finished guitar completely built, working as it should be for £1,300. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll get this down on the table, on the bench here, and uh, we'll go a bit further. Okay, well, there are a, a few things we've got to do. One of which is to actually fit these, uh, yeah, these things that seem to be missing off the body. Yeah, you know, the strap uh, thingies. Yeah, so I'm going to go and fit one there, or one down that end, and let's get that out of the way first. Okay, so there's one of them fitted, and uh, let's go and take a look at the other one. And yeah, there's the other one. All very simple. Screw them in and job's done. Ha! What more could I say? Okay, so I always wanted to uh, show you this a little bit as well, in case I didn't in uh, one of the other videos. But I did manage to get my hands on a, uh, a Fender 50th Stratocaster anniversary neck plate. It's in gold, but beggars can't be choosers. And that's a 1954 to 2004 neck plate. So my guess is the neck plate was made in 2004. But it doesn't matter because it's exactly the same design as what you'd expect on a Jeff Beck uh, strap. Well, not what you'd expect, but it, it is the same design without the 50th logo. But I like the 50th logo, so it's going on this guitar. So there. Okay, well, fitting this neck isn't rocket science, as you can imagine. Well, there's the, the pocket. And by the way, this neck's never been fitted to this guitar. I've never even tried to fit it to date. But well, there it is. There's the pocket and there are the four screws. And this little rubber band just sort of holds everything in place. And of course, here's the neck that's going to go absolutely into there. And what more can I say? So I'm just going to do that now. And... Uh, I probably won't speak much, but I'll do it on camera. Okay, so we should be able to just slot that in. Well, that's the theory. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to screw it together and I'll see you in a moment. Oh, one thing, uh, I do have some uh, some gold screws that I can fit in there, if you can see them. I'm going to pull these uh, chrome ones out and fit the gold ones just for, well, aesthetics. And there they are, ready to be screwed into place. So I'm going to go and do that now and I'll see you in a second. So as you're screwing these in, just be careful and you don't go and get them wrong by uh, some weird chance. They're not difficult to do. But I wouldn't tighten them down to the nth degree either. I'd just leave them slightly nipped like this when you first uh, fit the neck. And then we can uh, flip her over and take a good look at what's involved with the rest of it. Well, as you can see, I mean, none of this is rocket science, is it? It just fits, basically, because, well, it's a fender neck, a Jeff Beck fender neck, and it's a fender body, a Jeff Beck fender body. I mean, how hard does it have to be? Well, it doesn't. And from here on in, what we do is a bit of checking, setting up, and uh, fitting strings and that sort of stuff. And then we'll set the action and the, the rest of it, and... Well, you're in business. Nothing to it. Okay, well, it's basically fitted on there. It's not rocket science to do that. But you do have this uh, sort of tilt back screw. I'll call it that. Don't know what to call it. Don't really care either. But you have this tilt back screw that you could sort of slacken off to tilt the neck, shall we say, that away. If you can see that. You've got to tilt it that way. Or not. Yeah, well I have it loose, so for now it's just going to sit there where we sort of fit the strings and check out one or two different things. And then you can move on from there. But I want to talk about strings just for a few minutes and something I saw a while back. Which I might have said in uh, certain other videos, but uh, I think it's worth always mentioning. Uh, particularly uh, where some countries and their products are concerned. Hmm. Ah, oh, strings. Well, I could talk about strings forevermore. I could talk about what I paid for some Ernie Ball strings back in uh, 2019 in the Dallas Guitar Show. But I don't think I will. I'll save that for another video maybe sometime. But more recent than that, I, I bought some strings off, uh, I think it was Amazon. Well, it's one or the other. You know which ones, either Amazon or eBay. It was one or the other. And here they are. I've got a set of strings that I bought actually from Ernie Ball in 2019. And I've got a set of strings that I bought from either Amazon or eBay. I've got a sneaky feel when it was Amazon. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, and there they are on screen now. And what you've got to do, really is take a really good look at them because they are exactly the same product. Yep. Oh, you're surprised? Well, you're not surprised. Well, why would you be surprised? You can see them there. They are <laughs> the same basic product. Couple of things to note though. If you notice this one, it's sort of thicker than that. Well, I can't easily show you on camera, but this pack is thicker than this pack, which is much thinner. Yeah. What else can I say? Well, I can say that this pack is a lighter colour than that pack. And bearing in mind, they're supposed to be the same pack, the same strings, 9 to 42s and all the rest. Custom gauge, 2223, exactly the same, made in USA. Blah, 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 super slinky. Registered trademark, the Eagle, I'll call him that. Uh, really not much else, I don't know. Let's flip it over. Now you might just notice that one of them is more shiny than the other one. And I'll give the game away. This is the more shiny one than that one. But other than that, we can take a look at the packet. If you could read it, you would be reading the same thing. The same barcode, the same address, the same, basically, everything. Yeah, there's only one problem. Yeah, one of these two sets, let's turn them back. 
Why not? Yeah, there they are. One of these two sets is absolutely counterfeit. Yeah, and I want you to uh, put down below which one you think is counterfeit. The one on the left or the one on the right. So all you need to say is left or right in the comments. And let's see how many guys accurately determine what's counterfeit and what isn't. Because you can mark my words if you can't tell the difference. Well, you might when they're sitting side by side like this and I'm showing you. But could you tell the difference if they arrived in the post after you ordered them? In they come and you fit them on your guitar and away you go. All great or not. <laughs> anyway, that's a bit of a, a thing to be uh, looking at for now. I know other people have talked about them. I've talked about them before, but from time to time, I like to raise this point. And by the way, the counterfeit ones, let's not mess about, came from China. Yeah, but you knew that, of course. Yeah, total disregard for registered trademarks or patents or anything else. Anyway, that's the uh, counterfeit string section. So we'll go back to the guitar and do a bit more work. Okay, well here we are. I have my set of real strings out of the packet. And you can guess which one they are, as I said in the text below. So what I'm going to do is just fit these and then we can sort of take a look at, well, the layout of the land for want of a better phrase. Quite important we get uh, this bit right. And all these other adjustments and the rest. But I'm going to go and fit them first of all, because that's really, for me, the first thing you've got to do. But they'll be kept uh, relatively loose for now. Okay, well, this is just a quick shot of the, uh, the neck as it's fitted, just by default. No pulling at it or pushing at it or making any particular adjustments so far. But I just wanted to show you the accuracy of the strings down the neck. Because often you can take the guitar and do this or do that. And you, you're sort of adjusting the neck sideways a little bit. This one, as it happens, does, doesn't seem too bad. Maybe a little bit of an adjustment, but not much. And it's possible to do that very easily by just slacking your strings and just adjusting it a little bit. I'll go and have a look, see if I can get any further with that, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, well, I've made a, a slight adjustment to the neck, like this way and this way. And you can see that this string here, hopefully you can see it, is pretty much parallel with the side of the neck and, and, and so is the bass one. Pretty much parallel all the way down. And that's really the way it should be, at least it's the way I'm going to set it. So uh, I'm going to go and do uh, some more setting up now, like the, uh, the heights and the, make sure the neck's got the right relief and all the other sort of things that... I might need to do or might not need to do and what I'll do when I've done it I'll come back and tell you what I did because I could be spending all day on this if you want to know how to do it yourself I'll put a couple of videos down below in the text of guitars that I've sort of created uh, from different parts and things like that and show you where I show you actually what I do yeah the easy way out <laughs> I'll be back okay well here we go here's a quick uh, check And again. Which I guess is about near enough for me and probably near enough for you too. Okay, well there you have it. The uh, assembly, a quick assembly, I might add. Uh, of the uh, the Jeff Beck Fender Strat from uh, this one's I think uh, 23 neck and I'm not quite sure how old the body is but it 
it's pretty much brand new. Checking the original video that I did on the body, which is in the text below, and you can see yourself exactly where it stands. In any case, what I did was to uh, I checked the neck for the uh, the amount of curve, and that seemed okay, which it probably would. I checked the string heights and adjusted them with this little kit down here, and the uh, pickup heights indeed, with a prefox kit that I bought off Amazon. Yeah, it's called Prefox. Little kit, got all the bits in it, which is quite nice. And I did need one of these as well, you know, one of these uh, darn things. My string guy, when it was being checked for the relief, was about uh, seven or eight thousandths of an inch. And I did have a bit of trouble in uh, getting this uh, uh, so that it, uh, it plays up the neck as well as down the neck, which is uh, a bit of a job sometimes. <laughs> Yes, getting the intonation right uh, did take me a little while. And part of the problem was that, believe it or not, this uh, trem wasn't quite sitting where it should be. I made adjustments to the, uh, the radius of that and a uh, few adjustments to the height. Oh, and I did actually adjust the springs around the back and the tension. Now, I fitted uh, 9 to 42 strings. I don't know what strings were on this previously. I had to screw those two screws in about, uh, well, probably a turn, which means it's either had very light strings on or somebody's had some other springs off. Maybe I'd guess that. Who knows? I don't know. I don't really care. But that's what I had to do to get this to where it's playable. Yeah, and it should be playable. It sounds in tune to me. It's not plugged in, of course. But that's going to be coming up any time presently. So let me move this thing out of the way and uh, get a bit of room going. <laughs> okay, well, there you are. A Fender Stratocaster. Still got the plastic on. Still got its tag. I've got the uh, certificate for the body too. Just in case. <laughs> that's what it came with. And I've made a few adjustments here, and uh, yeah, it should all be about right. Yeah, got the intonation right. The, the action's not bad. I could make it better, but I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> Why would I? Yeah. So it's all, yeah, rock and roll, as they say in the trade. And, you know, I'd recommend anybody that uh, is a bit tight on cash, anybody that's a bit tight on cash should consider Looking out on uh, eBay for that stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to be from the Stratosphere. That's just a company I dealt with. And I paid for everything, by the way. So it is a, a real review. Like the review on the body and the review on the neck earlier. It really was bought by me, built by me. And uh, yeah, it'll be my guitar. Which you can't argue with, really. Because I'm a real customer. Hmm. You probably see this one played off and on as well. Yeah, not a bad uh, piece of gear overall, I don't think. Summing up, you've got to sit back a little bit and consider, well, for what you paid and what you got, was it a good deal or was it not a good deal? What would you give it as a score, Tony? I thought to myself, well, it's got to be a 10. But has it? Has it got to be a 10? You know, it did have that little tiny little dent on the neck which you, I can't honestly it isn't even worth getting the spray can out it's that minor the body was nigh on perfect I've had to make a few adjustments on setting up and things like that but everything works so yeah I'm sorry it's 10 out of 10 I couldn't give it anything else it'd be just ridiculous to to mark down something as good as this I and mean, it all fitted together absolutely easily except for that one adjustment at the back there you know so what else could i say i'd recommend like i said if you don't want to spend the 21 or 2300 pounds or dollars plus tax but not in england with the 20 percent tax then this is a, a relatively good idea to uh yeah to go and buy one. And you can buy one in bits, can't you? So you can save up and then get another bit. 
makes sense to me. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way. I need subscribers, right? They contribute in some ways towards the lighting, the time, the heating, the this, the everything else that goes with it. And, of course, some of the bits sometimes, because these are paid-for bits. So, subscribe, do that thumbs-up thing, and hit that bell. Don't smash it. <laughs> That's vandalism. Yeah, just hit that bell so it dings along. And, uh, yeah, I'll be very pleased about that. Also, don't forget my website. I have to mention it in every video in case you're new. Which is https colon slash slash tonymackenzie.com It's on the screen now. And lastly, always have a look down in the text because often there is some very useful information and links to uh, stuff that I've done before that's sort of related in one way or another. My aim and objective on this channel is really, honestly, really, to try and help people. Now, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Who doesn't? But there's some on... Uh, yeah, there's some on the internet that make mistakes or don't make mistakes, but all they do is play a bit and that's it. Uh, you'll never get that from me. You'll get more than that. Uh, I don't just play. I show you what I do myself. And that's always got to be a good thing, especially if you're a bit tight on the money. You know, lots of people are, especially in this climate. Oh, yeah. Anyway, until next time, plane's coming up now, so get out of here. And thanks for watching, guys.